losses. Bah! Humbug! Sanity is a requirement for our kind. Hey, it's no secret, I love me some Mega Man. And I'm not just talking about the classic series, I'm also talking about the various generations. Which brings us to Mega Man X. Here's the thing, in the X series, the story is darker, the gameplay is expanded upon, and the bosses, or Mavericks, are for the most part pretty damn awesome. Of course, there are those stinkers that just piss me off for some reason. Whether it's their design, stage, boss fight, weapon, or whatever, these are the Reploids that make my gorge rise. Now let me lay down a few ground rules. First, no Mavericks from Command Mission. That's an RPG and it doesn't feel right. Second, I'm not counting Sigma, Vile, etc. Just the ones that give you weapons. Third, for the sake of variety, I'm including at least one boss from each of the main series X games. Also, word of warning, I am about to get vicious in terms of my language. If you're easily offended, well, that's your problem, not mine. Enough stalling, I've got a zombie to put down. It's game time! Mega Man X4 Okay, to be honest, picking just one bad Maverick in X4 was really torturous. After all, X4 had the best overall rogues gallery of Mavericks in the series. Since X4 is my absolute favorite Mega Man X game, it would be no surprise that I place its representative for Suck at the lowest spot on the list. Because, in all seriousness, the closest thing this game has to a bad Maverick is Cyber Peacock. McAfee ain't gonna help you here, Chief. While this guy isn't exactly horrible, he does carry a lot of missed potential. The use of cyberspace as an element isn't exactly something that's explored often, so it's not like there's much of a precedent, but they could have done a lot more with it. For one, its design doesn't exactly scream, I'm a bad guy, I'm gonna kill you. His stage is pretty good and creative, but can be very irksome to go through. There are switches everywhere that flip shit sideways, bullet-happy flying thingamafuckers, and lumps of lemon jelly. The hell? God damn it! Might as well rip out my controller while you're at it! It doesn't help that his fight is even more basic than the other less creative element-based Mavericks. He performs several of the cool techniques you would expect a being like this to do. He'll teleport around the room, generate cybernetic constructs, and will attempt to confuse you as much as possible. But that's just about it. It's a pretty repetitive fight, and annoying if you're not well-versed with the series. At least the weapons are okay, especially Zero's cool new Giga attack, Hammy Battle Cry and all. Get ready! And if this is the worst X4 could do, it really speaks volumes of the quality of the roster. But enough praising X4. It's time to get down to the real shit. And here we have the original stinker. Oh lord, this is gonna get ugly. The original Mega Man X is a case similar to X4 in that it too had a great lineup of killer mavericks. Unfortunately, there is one maverick that just doesn't do it for me. Yeah, I'm not afraid to say it. Flame Mammoth sucks. And apparently, he blows too. This not-so-giant giant is a weird, unsavory mixed bag. There are a few fields he does surprisingly well in, and fails to deliver in just about everything else. Just for the sake of ease, let's cover those he does some good in. The first one being his weapon. The Fire Wave, while somewhat practical in offense, really doesn't supply any more uses than just a short-range line of fire. Think of the Pyro from TF2, except two-dimensional. Literally. Not the best weapon in the game, but far from terrible. Then there's his stage, an abandoned factory, exactly the kind of thing you'd want to see in the midst of an android war. Complete with ravaged conveyor belts, half-mangled worker reploids pissed to see you, and uh, these guys who seem to never run out of pickaxes. Dare I ask where they're getting those from? It's well-paced, it's cool to get the buster upgrade, the music is headbang-worthy, and it's funny how the lava freezes over after you beat the penguin. How does that even work? Too bad the guy himself is a complete derp. First sign of lame? His design. With his huge yet unremarkable frame and his decidedly derpy expression, this guy sticks out like a sore thumb amongst the rest of the lineup. His battle is also extremely underwhelming. It takes place in a conveyor belt, kind of like Metal Man from Mega Man 2, but without any of the thrill, because the belt moves as slow as molasses. Flame Mammoth will spit out fire and oil, 
jump around the room causing earthquakes, and occasionally reverse the belt. One major problem with this fight is that the arena is wide, and if Flame Mammoth is off-screen, you can't hurt him, but he can still hurt you! Fuck is that bear? On the plus side, you can cut off his trunk with the boomerang cutter, which is pretty funny. But that can't change the fact that Flame Mammoth deserves to go extinct. You don't have to spectacularly suck at one thing to be labeled as a dud. Being meh in virtually every category is just about as bad. And this is probably going to end up hurting me, but Neon Tiger fits the description. Questionable pick for being the worst of X3, I know, but plug-in Tigger looks more than he actually does. So, what's to actually like about him? His design, which is actually a trifle basic, looks pretty cool. He's a tiger for crying out loud. Unfortunately, that's just about all I can say about this thing in a positive light. Everything else about this guy just bores me. His stage? A total snooze fest. A forest setting, in spite of its simplicity, doesn't make it automatically boring in design. Another point that X4 shows off beautifully. But this forest kinda is. It's not too interesting a level to begin with, what with the only memorable thing about it being the mini-boss and how it looks. Really, it's just a forest without any sense of fitting atmosphere, mystery, or excitement. The only things I remember from it are those dragonflies you can stand on, and the dirt monsters that eat up the floor leaving spikes behind. Even the music, which usually kicks ass in Mega Man X, is a very repetitive tune that literally cycles through each of its bars four consecutive times. If what I've been saying here stepped on the cat's tail, this next bit oughta outright neuter him. Sporting that vicious look would tell you right away that he puts up a good fight, but nah. His battle standards border along the lines of lightweight Stone Man. He jumps up on the wall, stays there, shoots massively avoidable ray splashes, jumps down, and goes to the other side. And that's pretty much it. Even without his weakness, he's still one of the lousiest bosses the X-Series has ever seen. Repetitive, simple, hardly threatening, you know, the usual shitty boss recipe. Those claws? He has all of one attack where he uses them. And his weapon... is it at least worthwhile? I guess, but it's not very fun to use, despite how effective it is against the late-game bosses. Press the button, and quite literally, watch the fireworks. Useful, but I'd rather take the Frosted Flakes, to be honest. Give them to some poor starving child in Africa. God knows they need food. Okay, so we all know how iffy X5 is in some areas. The difficulty spikes, Alia, the oversaturation of text, um, Alia... But it's not one I personally can call terrible. The Maverick roster was disappointing after seeing X4, but it does have its good eggs. And then there's the ones that rot in the fridge that nobody opens. Grizzly Slash is one of them. Following what both Neon Tiger and Flame Mammoth shat out on a plate, this is another miserable sap that just confuses me. Design-wise, he looks... okay, I guess. Might seem like an understatement looking at the badass artwork, but while this gives him a ferocious, brutish visage, his in-game sprite just looks... stupid. I don't know why, but I just can't do anything but laugh at it. And what is up with the design choices made here? For all the locations to put a bear maverick in, why a train? You could have put him in the woods, in a fishing stream. Even a circus would make more sense than a goddamn express locomotive. But no, bears on trains. Might as well give us card games on hippos. Forget it, I'm done. As for the stage itself, it's just a crappy version of Slash Beast stage from X4. Oddly, the weapon he gives is the best aspect, or least shitty, I should say. Zero once again gets the better end of the stick, being awarded with both a stronger spin technique and a double jump, X basically gets the equivalent of Quick Man's Quick Boomerang, which is still pretty good. But the quote-unquote fight you have with this dysfunctional picnic basket case just drowns any decent praise made before in shit. If you're gonna flash a bold warning sign in my face, at least have the boss be competent! Next generation Toadman peoples! He growls a stock growl, leaps with the power of the Force, and occasionally digs down like drunken Spindrill Mario. Yeah, yeah, I love it, don't you? If you even care to call them that, his... Attacks are embarrassingly easy to dodge even on the hardest setting. Yeah, yeah, Guns N' Roses reference, yeah, but at least I can fully grasp his Japanese name being Crescent Grizzly. He jumps like he's on the fucking moon! If your jumping cycle takes three whole seconds to happen, something is wrong! Oh yeah, looks like he's gonna fight you finally! Nope, I duck. How did Sigma approve of you? Might as well wrap up this guy for Zangief. From that place with love, you fuck! You know, it really is a shame. Merely from the rotten core of the apple that preceded it, not many people know of X8's good bearings. Yeah, the art style changed and it still feels weird to have the characters sport a 3D look, but it truly does feel like a genuine, respectable member of the Mega Man X family. 
take it as a blunt suggestion from me. If you haven't touched it or even looked in its general direction, take a shot of the buster and take it for a spin. It's not what X7 was, guys. Its Maverick roster, on the other hand, not so much. I mean, Bamboo Pandemonium? What the hell kind of name is that? And who knew it would actually be fitting? Several Mavericks have some seriously awkward or bothersome dialects, but Panda Boys seems to make the least amount of sense. AKA, what the hell is with this guy's voice? Why does he sound like Ben Stein? The design is pretty bland too, I mean, with something like a panda, I guess you don't have much to work with in terms of ferocity, but couldn't they at least give him some friggin' pupils? At least Grizzly Slash looked cool in concept art, but this guy? No. No look at all. He's a derp on all levels. A derp robot. Can't get much more mindless than that. The only real good thing about him is his stage, and well, let's just say it's not one he deserves to call his own. It's set within a forest. Ooh, you mean what a panda lives in? Hoorah! But honestly, it's a decent stage. I mean, yeah, the main route can be a little repetitive with monotonous shootouts against 17 million enemy walkers, and the path to get the upgrades can be a real pain in the ass with the clunky walker design, probably the worst in the series. But I do find some joy in going through it. I'll also admit, the fight isn't horrible. I mean, it's boring, don't get me wrong, but I can stomach it fine. Although, unlike Flame Mammoth, it doesn't really feel satisfying to put the derp down. Feels like none of that really mattered. Maybe that's because the weapon he leaves you with is... meh. Slow and clunky, just like him. It's like I didn't even get something worthwhile for that below-average scuffle. Thanks, asshole. Truth be told, Pandemonium might be based on an endangered species, but I feel no shame whatsoever in putting this thing down. Okay, time to talk about my guilty pleasure of the series, Mega Man X6. Yeah, it's not spectacular, and it wasn't supposed to even exist in the first place, but I can still find some good in it. The gameplay is solid as ever, Zero is awesome as always, once you defeat the Zero Nightmare, and the music, for the most part, is the kick-ass norm. However, X6 did a lousy job of handling its Mavericks. Oh, I'm sorry, Nightmare Investigators. How shall I put this? I'll take six chromium donuts, one medium corrosive purple Fanta, one spicy jerk-ass chicken, and make it fresh as hell. The Blaze Heat X combo will give you heartburn. From a Maverick wielding the fire element, I would at least expect some kind of decent level design. Almost every other Fire Maverick has that. Even Charred Broiled Tantor! From the second you warp into the action, you're immediately sucked out of the enjoyment. Drop down the cliff and... What is that? Um... Pfft. Uh, it's a donut. It's... a donut. Alright, can I wall kick over it? Nope! It got Kiwis! Goddamn Kiwis, why can't you stop? Heh, <laughs> okay, that was a pain. Well, guess what? You fight this thing a total of six times. Is this a Mechanical Menace's base or some fucking Dunkin' Donuts? What is with the donuts? It's clear that Capcom was trying to emulate the mini-boss gauntlet with this level. I can appreciate the gesture, guys, but this is just brainless. The aptly named Red Ring of Bullshit fought at the start is annoying and bland as it is. But six times? That's not even a joke. The team behind X6 were just flat-out asses here, on top of being lazy. How does one even do that? The donut slashed a big nasty wound, but the battle pours salt, arsenic, battery acid, moon dust, and lemon juice into it. By that, I mean for being painfully easy. This chicken McFuck nugget summons his deadly grape Kool-Aid, then nothing. He paces back and forth like a dumbass, slowly rises up, and shoots you with retardedly easy to avoid lava balls. And I don't even think he has a different attack. As far as the weapons go, it's the exact opposite as Grizzly Slash. X gets an extremely useful slash that shoots fireballs, while Zero just gets a basic upward fire slash that's hardly useful. Either way, it's nowhere near worth the trouble you go through just getting to this asshole, let alone shoveling yourself to this horrible battle. Seriously, fuck this bird. So, yeah, X2. While it doesn't quite measure up to the original, it's still a good game in its own right. Unfortunately for what it did right, it did a few things wrong as well. For example, snails are not exactly known for being threatening, so why the fuck would Capcom think of making a Maverick out of one? Crystal Snail is lame. This jerk combines a stupid design with a fight that's annoying as your average snail in the flower garden. I mean, seriously, look at him. I don't know about you, but I just can't take this guy seriously. Let's give him some credit, though. His stage is pretty cool. It's a crystal mine with various multicolored surfaces. 
Think Gemini Man stage enhanced to 16-bit specifications. The layout's a bit odd and it's got a lame mini-boss, sure, but the shiny environmental look, the use of the walker, the slick music track, and the slippery slopes are all fun. Especially the slopes. Unfortunately, the mollusk has a fight that's about as boring as watching your garden-variety snail dribble all over the new roses. First of all, it takes him 10 full seconds to get down to the ground and jut that awkward face right out at us. Lovely first impression there, dude. Where's this gonna take us? About half an hour's worth of tedium. He spits at your face, hides like a big wuss, and always hovers about in the air, sometimes for as long as 13 seconds. And whatever you do, don't fight him without his weakness weapons. He will duck and cover from damage so much. And with the huge defense hitbox he has, not using his weakness weapon is a free of charge route to 30 minutes down the shitter. The best way to put it, this is like fighting Onaga in Mortal Kombat Deception. A lot of blocking, even more yelling. Also, he slows down time. How the fuck that works is beyond me, but it just drags out the fight even longer. Everything about this fight runs at about a snail's pace. Okay, if that's supposed to be your idea of grandiose inside jokes, then go back to Clown College. And that weapon is pretty bad. The Crystal Hunter is a slow-moving blue blob that, <clears throat> haunts down enemy targets, encasing them in crystal, and it turns the enemy into a platform. But you can only use it once per enemy, and it doesn't kill anything. Except maybe Overdrive Ostrich. Also, might I mention how useless the charge-up for this weapon is? It slows down time and all enemies within range, but it slows down you, too. Real useful there. Missed opportunity? Thy name is Crystal Snore. Sounds about right. Meet your match, Sierra Club. Considering what they did to the poor defenseless snail, what do you think they did to the cute little tortle? Pretty much the same thing, but worse. Whereas Crystal Snail at least had a unique idea to him, Rainy Turtleoid really has nothing. Remember, folks, size isn't everything. This trite turtle titan may as well be the evolved form of Crystal Snail, because he's a step up from a pain in the ass to an even bigger pain in the ass. While I will admit his design does look pretty awesome, and they actually did make him look like a turtle, this one point still gets pile drive down to whatever Mega Man's China looks like. Yeah, that's it. Did you expect more? Did that 50 bucks expect more? Well, too bad. Secondhand Tip Tub doesn't do returns. For one thing, his stage is up there with Blaze Heatnex on the annoyance factor. It takes place within a desolate region of Inami, Japan. It looks cool at first with a neat pagoda in the background. It's a nice day out there, and then... Acid Rain. Yes, that's 100% what I meant to say. Fucking Acid Rain! The stage is constantly paraded with drops of this shit, and it actually eats away at your health! The idea here is to locate these random, tiny-ass little cores that power the Acid Rain generators. It's bad enough that they're the size of one Buster Lemon, making them hard to hit, but they get clustered next to packs of enemies. God damn! if it weren't for the healing capsules, I swear the stage would be darn near impossible. Can I at least get a good boss battle? Oh, that's not pleasant. That shell of his dominates the fight. He never even turns around. That shell is facing you the entire time that you're facing him, and it factors into all of his attacks. For one, he'll fire off a barrage of missiles, and the only safe spot is in the upper corner of the room. For two, he'll withdraw into that shell, which grows spikes, and try to tackle you. His desperation attack has him ramming the walls and throwing numerous globs of dangerous water. This is extremely hard to avoid for two reasons. One, there's so many globs to avoid, and two, when he hits the wall, he shakes it so hard that you won't be able to stay on. Oh, and you can't even damage him until you destroy his weak points, which couldn't be more obvious if they had arrows pointing to them. Oh, and his weapon sucks too. Meteor Rain? Neither falls up, people! Now let me just kick this guy over to Mario so I can move on. Okay, this is primarily my experience, but Squid Adler frustrates me to absolutely no end. Why? I'll explain. It's the same situation as Blaze Heatnix. He looks cool, but going through his stage was a pain in the ass. It starts with a ride chaser level that looks like it was designed to piss you off. This is like trying to watch that retarded succubus cutscene from DMC without laughing or cringing. You're ill-prepared. You're gonna laugh. It's disappointing to see the game's one and only ride chaser stage handled so... carelessly. Look at that! I'm already dead! They expect us to react this quickly? They throw the surprise pit before the word READY even subsides. That's not readying us up. If you thought Jet Stingray was bad, you haven't seen shit. What's worse, if you want the power up here, you need to get all the blue orbs on the track, which can lead to even more deaths. That's just the first half of the level. The 
second half of the stage is done on foot. A lot of the enemies are shielded, and rooms are separated by these doors that can only be opened by connecting switches. Problem is, the switches take so long to close, and if you can't get to the door in time, the switch opens up, closing the fucking doors and making you do the whole bullshit process over again. After that, some arbitrary hanging bars, poorly placed spikes, and electric traps, and you can see why this stage drives me to insanity. And we haven't even gotten to Adler himself yet. Sure, the fight starts out easy, with you having to jump over the electric balls he constantly throws. Not too much trouble, until he loses a third of his health. Then it gets hairy. At this point, Adler starts creating blocks in the middle of the arena, making it tougher to dodge his attacks. Some of these blocks are even electrified, which adds one more thing to dodge. As if that weren't enough, he'll start electrifying the floor, meaning you're stuck on the walls. All this shit going on at once means you'll have to keep moving. Neither of his weapons are worth the trip down ripoff hell, either. X gets something useless, and Zero gets the only means of beating the Shadow Devil without wasting breath. Alright, perhaps there is something worth all that misery, but Mega Man's kind of defined by its levels. I'm not sure if I'm in the majority or the minority here, but this isn't the kind of stage that tugs on my arm and says, let's have some fun. Sounds like the kind I never want to play again! Fuck. Fuck. Fuck! Back to the bottom of the idea's bin in X2. Seriously, were the people at Capcom high when they designed Wire Sponge? They throw this horrific dumpster snowman in our face and expect us to think it's a sponge? Well, that's a flat-out lie! He looks like... a pickle. With pot leaves for swords. They had to be high on something when they conjured this up. Crack, weed, dope, speed, whatever! It's far none one of the stupidest looking mavericks ever drawn up. He's a derp! With the design already being both unappealing and misleading, can you expect anything else to be better? Well, you're gonna have some fun! Just by the look of it, Fire Sponge was the maverick the developers probably intended you to go after first. His level tries to throw the gimmick of weather changing your way, but it's still very basic. Why? Because the weather doesn't do anything! It does a good job at increasing the brightness level, I guess, but the sun barely changes the environment or the enemies! Not to mention the rainstorm hinders you less than even a flea trying to block your path. It just doesn't work! Well, thankfully it's nothing atrocious or ball-busting, but it still has little excuse for being this underwhelming. Rainy Turtleoid made a more threatening climate than this. Negatively dull and easy. Even if this was the first stage we'd enter, I wouldn't call it excusable. The battle with SpongeBong is exactly as his stage sets up. Boring! He stands his ground from afar, rips off Legend of Zelda, jumps like he's a happy bunny, with a blank expression, clings onto the ceiling for no reason, and starts making the battlefield his new special plantation! Come on! For a pile of suck called Wire Sponge, there's really nothing Wire or Sponge about this fight at all! Where's the electricity? Zap me into oblivion already! You're supposed to kill me! Oh, finally there's some lightning! Come on, really? Funny thing is, being so baked, he probably thinks he's hurting us! Heh, <laughs> yeah, it hurts alright. Hurts my sanity. This is like watching your plants shrivel up and die! Boring, nothing happens, and it's a sad, unenviable display of nature. Also, the strike chain's a letdown. Think the hookshot, only it doesn't work. At all. It doesn't strike down anything! Except maybe Sigma's second form. Ugh, don't do drugs, kids. Especially if you're getting into game design. It's come to this, hasn't it? <sighs> X7's terrible, and I hate it. Land theming, atrocious shift in perspective, botched character portrayals, gimmicks up the ass, and design choices that regularly make grown reploids blow out their own goddamn CPU. It's the absolute worst the series has gotten, people who like it are few and far between, and it's among one of my most hated games of all time. You could say that this list was just one big reason to keep this motherfucker in, and nothing else. And you may be entirely right, this game's gonna pay for what it did to Mega Man X! And I might as well start with the fucking pig bike! I mean, with all the shit I've been shoveling my way through, at least all the previous in seven machines I've torn apart could actually pass as actual Mavericks! But with the festering heap of mecha pig shit that is... Ride... Borsky! So many questions come to mind! First off, what the hell is this I'm even looking at? This half-assed idea isn't even original, let alone something I can stomach! He's... Sadly, a main series robot enemy that can shift into a vehicle. Gee, that's fresh. The concept was fun when Mega Man 7 did it, but it didn't carry well into the newer games at all. His stage is a ride chaser stage that takes place on a highway circuit. Instead of simply driving towards the goal, however, you need to pick up bombs on the track. 
this wouldn't be such a problem, except that the ride chaser's controls are so awkward that it's almost impossible to do the job in one go. On top of that, there's bomb-throwing enemies, weaponized traffic cones, and exploding boxes. If you think that's bad, there's also Reploids to rescue, which in itself is a pain in the ass, since one false move could cause one of them to die, possibly costing you a power-up. And as if that weren't bad enough, there's a time limit! As if I didn't have enough to worry about, damn it! And after all that shit behind you and those dirty lost lives, you get to the bastard Roadhog himself! It just... This is Razzy material! Who wants to hear this hog talk anyway? Well, I don't! Not to mention he brought his infinitely spawning posse with him! With such an unpleasant sea of misery and embarrassment I had to drag my way through, I'm gonna have a freak pig's head on my wall! Shitty design, shitty stage, shitty boss battle, and all smushed together with a very undeserved music piece. How the hell did he get this song? Did he and his biker fucks ransack some Crush 40 stocks? What do we get from all that? Beyblades? Beyblades?! That's it, I'm gonna go eat some bacon. Wow. Wow! I... I can't believe this is real. All my bitching about the designs of past Mavericks may have sounded irrelevant, you know, with the word shit being tossed around, but here, it's actually come to life! Let me tell you what Ground Scaravich is, in case you didn't already know. It's a dung beetle. A. Dung. Beetle. What is it about this design that bugs me? Well, for those of you who don't carry a thesaurus around in your pants, let me put it to you bluntly. It's shit. But the iffy machinations of this revolting geezer don't stop at the design, oh no. His stage is also pretty fucked up. With this terrible idea, you'd expect something like its own habitat to be made into the stage. But no. It's another one of those, what the fuck am I even looking at levels. A museum. A random museum with nothing in it. What are these, totem poles? You touch them and... What? The hell? Did someone hack my game? All right, Chewie, I know you're watching. This is what happens when crack is mixed up with a respectable job. Either that, or just insane laziness. And then, for whatever reason, someone thought it would be dynamite to litter a whole assload of nightmares and heaps of shit to come subdue you. All that with randomly generated rooms of tedium and boredom. That's right, they're random but all of them are both a chore to go through, and just very unprofessional. It just makes no sense anywhere. In a serious moment, okay, not so serious, I'm not digging the whole jumbled bullshit theme of this place. It's shoddily patched together with its only impaired thoughts put towards shit out as much enemies as possible, and not much more thought was put into the battle either. The only thing he does is roll his turn around. That's it. Don't let it touch me, don't let it touch me. Does he even know I'm here? Look, he's just doing his business. Hello! I'm here to kill you! Respect the art of fighting! What's worse, his weapons are crap. The deceptively named Ground Dash just creates a boulder that's as slow as fuck and has very limited range unless you charge it. The technique Zero gets is even worse. It causes Zero to dive at an enemy at an awkward angle, and the attack can't be interrupted. Allow me to reiterate. Do we have to take this shit?! Back to X8. This is what happens when I call a game good. It shrivels up and dies. Now I have to clean up the corpse. But honestly, that corpse smells better than this skunkweed. Why? How? How in the name of Luby Dr. Kane can you make a decent game and even have something like this even conceived? Optic Sunflower is easily the worst Maverick in Mega Man X8. Where do I start with him? Maybe the fact that he's a sunflower, you know, with arms and legs and a face? But that's not the whole deal. This cone-wearing patch of crabgrass wouldn't be this high if it was just for bad concepts. I don't think there's a single good thing about... him? For one thing, his stage is uninspired and boring. It's nothing but a series of tests like how fast you can destroy these enemies, or how many you can kill within a certain time limit, and the areas are connected by small, yet annoying hallways. What, did Sigma make some demonic love with GLaDOS or something? If I wanted to play mini-games, I'd play some fucking Mario Party! In fact, this looks familiar. Cyberspace? Trial rooms? This is a Cyber Peacock ripoff! His battle is annoying as well. For most of the fight, he'll warp around the room, rearranging the blocks in his room, and creating clones of himself while occasionally shooting off lasers that can be easily avoided because they don't go through the platforms. And then there are these orbs which can trap you, meaning you'll have to switch, then, when his back's against the wall, he'll start bombarding you with- What is with the lasers? 
as far as the weapon you get, Zero gets his Giga Attack, which is lackluster to be honest, Axel gets a Ray Gun, which is actually pretty good, and X gets... Fireworks? FUCKING FIREWORKS?! On a side note, if you have data from Command Mission, you actually can fight Cutman in this stage. Flee with 8-bit Sprite! Cool easter egg, but far from enough to redeem this shit stain of a Maverick! And it's really sad when you think of how Capcom has made good plant-based Mavericks in the past. Split Mushroom from X4 had a cool stage and an extremely useful weapon. Axel the Red also had a cool stage and weapon, and his design was pretty slick. This weed, on the other hand, is a living question mark. And the question mark here is obvious as hell! WHY DOES THIS THING EXIST?! I to think... I still have two more left. You thought I was about to cry before? This next guy is about to bring me to tears! Seriously, Capcom? What the fuck were you thinking when you came up with Tornado Tunyon? Optic Sunflower wasn't the first one of these stupid non-animal designs. This punchline came first, believe it or not. Great starting blueprint there, Capcom! The blue is from the tears. Of your consumers! Children! Teenagers! Adults! Anybody who spent money on this wad of sloppy mediocrity shares my sentiments. So, do we even need a reason as to why this was a shithead idea? First, let's dice the design. He's... a fucking... onion! An onion! Never mind that it's something maligned for making people cry. You are fighting with something that you put in your soup. Hell, your sandwich, your everyday cuisine. This is the absolute bottom of the idea bin. Our minds aren't made of vegetables, Capcom. Your work is. This isn't Pokemon, guys. This is Mega Man X. I wouldn't expect a game series centered around a semi-apocalyptic war between robots and deep moralities to have a fucking salsa ingredient as a major enemy. Use your heads, guys. You're grown adults, for God's sake! Fucking onion. And he doesn't even look like an onion! More like Clown Man if he swallowed a pumpkin! What?! Pumpkin?! P pumpkin what?! 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 Pumpkin what?! And the way this fucker acts makes me want to rip his face off and drown him in a vat of searing plasma! Who, in any existence, behaves like this? <laughs> Did I really just pay for this?! This is horseshit! We haven't even gotten to a stage. Back when I was a boy, remember when stages actually, you know, had things in them? God, I miss those days. But seriously, what is it with this place? It's nothing but a spiraling walkway with sparse enemies, and when I say sparse, I mean basically nothing. I'm dead serious. You can do nothing but dash jump as any character and not get hit once, without any resistance. They just forget that we like to be challenged? Why did this have to go and become a baby's crib? This is nothing. Three levels, one lousy mini-boss, and I'm still bored to tears. And since this stage capitalized on simply dashing around in a circle, why not have the boss do the same? I'm not kidding. Look, he does absolutely nothing but spin. That's gotta be a ballet record, but why? Those are the two words to paraphrase this D student novel. Nothing, and why? We have a sentient vegetable who's also a fruit, doing choreographical hokey pokey bullshit with a teeny tiny baby man peewee Herman voice. In a Mega Man game. This is beyond any bullshit I can cope with. The design's a joke, its character is retired Sonic X material, the stage is empty, the battle's horrible and repetitive, the weapon blows, and besides... He's just an onion! He's just an onion! He's just an onion! He's just an onion. He's just an onion. Okay, okay, I'm okay. I'm cool, I'm cool. I'm hardened by now. I'm ready for just about anything. Bring it on. Nope! I was wrong! I was not- I was- I was not ready for anything! Nope, nope, I'm done. I'm fucking done. I'm fucking done! I'm not getting out of this, am I? Sweet, merciful Palatina. This maverick. This fucking maverick. X7's crowning bastard, easily one of the most maligned things ever put in Mega Man, Flame Hyenard is a class below any and all Reploid life. Now, what kind of sense does this make? I pop a godforsaken onion in your face and then show this? Shouldn't the onion be number one? Well, I get what you're saying. 
In terms of blunt design, Tornado Tunyon is worse. Much worse. I'd sooner fight a hyena than something straight from the kitchen, but oh man, that is the least of our worries. While the plant-themed laugh riots were straight-up embarrassments, this gaping flamer bus fuck is an absolute insult! Everything, from stage, to battle, to 11 years later, the agony never goes away! I mean, a hyena would make for a cool design, but they completely blew it! I mean, look at his face. It looks like he's in pain. That expression? That's me right there! What else went wrong here? Oh, where do I start? How about that awesome stage? Oh god, it hurts to even fake saying that! Of course, since he's the Lord of the Flames, he's gotta have the best of all the fire stages. You're fucking kidding, right? The only thing to note here is that there's lava. Yep, that's it. Lava. Lots and lots of sustained, non-moving lava. The layout is such fucking shit, it feels like the same thing going on for hours. Even changing the mere color of the background would have been an improvement. You like this picture right here? You like it? Get used to it, because that's all you're gonna see. Combined with the bland theming of X7 and molasses speed, this feels like every bland, boring thing in the X Games puking all over you. Uncontrolled, brainless clusters of the same enemies, the pacing of a dead slacking, uninteresting environments, a bland music track, and a grand feeling of dissatisfaction. The 3D area is even worse. When you consider the absolutely horrendous camera, and the fact that enemies can just pop in from out of nowhere, not to mention the annoying laser sweepers that can knock you into the lava, killing you instantly, you'll be pulling your hair out just trying to survive to the end, let alone rescuing all the Reploids! But the worst part is fighting this fucker! At the beginning, you see two of him running at you throwing fireballs while a giant mechanoid gazelle shoots missiles at you from the edge of the arena! Fucking cheater! It gets worse! No matter how much you shoot either of these guys, the health bar won't go down! So which one's the real one? Well, guess what? They're both clones, and the real one's on top of the fucking gazelle! Are you shitting me? And it gets worse! When you get on top of the fucking thing, his attacks depend on where you stand. If you're on the gazelle's shoulders, he'll just throw fireballs while missiles rain down on your head. But God help you if you're in the middle, because he'll summon his clones to circle you and pelt you with fire, and if you try to escape, they'll all tackle you. Your best hope is to switch to zero and spam the fuck out of Suiretsu's in the entire time. Not only that, but there's no friction on the mechanoloid, which means you'll slide all over the place when it turns the corner. And then there's Hyenard. From the moment the fight starts, he'll make it perfectly clear that he wants to set you on fire and watch you smolder until you're nothing but a pile of ashes on the floor. Or as he so chooses to put it... Flame Hyenard is everything terrible about X7. Combining bland design, a boring and frustrating stage, a cheap and annoying battle, painful voice acting, a weapon that sucks, oh, and since there's a boss rush, you have to fight him again! It's shit like this that makes Kefka seem subtle. For me in particular, this is one of the most insufferable things I've ever seen. This is nothing but a migraine. There is no Maverick worse than this. Moral of the story, don't be a flamer. And don't ever fight this boss! <laughs> it's over. It's finally over! The curse has finally been dispelled! I'm the quarter guy, and praise the lord for top 50 worst mavericks shall trouble me no more! <laughs> Happy holidays, everybody! Show me, let me out of the dark.